Jazz Martians of Del Mar. Thank you. 
Sweet. Yeah. All right, ladies and gents. Welcome to our studio, Sprague Land, here in Encinitas. Thanks so much for being with us. We, we, uh, that was kind of a joke in the front. I hope that translated. It was fun to do. It was fun to get that weird, like, uh, I could, I could hang with that all day, actually. <laughs> really nice. So my name is Peter Sprague. I'm just going to talk a little bit as I'm adjusting. There we go. Um, my name is Peter Sprague. Welcome to episode nine, The Jazz Martians of Del Mar. Mark, who, who's playing saxophone, him and myself, and a bunch of other musicians, these guys all spent a lot of time in Del Mar. Mark and I grew up in Del Mar. Probably the legal way of saying it is that we are Del Marians. Mm. Mark, would you say that's correct? No, that's wrong. It's Del Martians. Yeah, well, legally, though. Oh, legally, yeah, yeah. If you want to get legal, I'd say. <laughs> Delmarians were working. Yeah, but Mar that's so boring. So that's, that's how I came up with it. We prefer Delmartians and uh, super stoked. Um, we've got some newer tech. Well, first off, to our chatmeister, Stephanie, that's my wife. Any um, comments about the sound? Yes, everybody says positive things. Sound is tip top. Good. All in top form, Randy Rahil, Robert Bush, sound is dialed in. Tanya Schneiderman says, sounds great, so. Nice. Good, yes. Neat. We, we love hearing that. So the sound is good. We have some newer, if you were here a couple weeks ago when we did it, we had this map that came up and it showed people where, it showed where all, the, all of you guys live. And, and it was kind of fun. And the dude that uh, made that happen even spent the last two weeks non-stop perfecting the app so let's have fun with it so what you can do if you're into the chat into the chat just say hi I'm Sally from from the big word and then say where you're from now it, there's no restriction on it being weird like you could say I'm from Barstow or I'm from Italy it would it would think that you're telling the truth so you, you, you it's up to you tell the truth if you want but it'd be really fun to have it, and we'll display that a little bit later. So that's the new tech. If it's, um, Peter, if it's strictly a world map, then if people say they're from Mars, that's not going to work. <laughs> well, that's only for us to say, because we're the Del Martians of Del Mar, right? That's right. Hey, that that uh, let me let me tell you who is in the band. Mark Lessman is the, the saxophonist, and that was his song called Wizard Winks. How about a hand for Mark Lessman? On drums, sitting in front of the universe as a whole. I, I, we love that new backdrop that he has. That's Duncan Moore on the drums. Yes. The Blue Man Group. <laughs> Upstairs, Mac Layton playing bass. Mac Layton playing bass. On the piano, that's John Offercook. Beautiful. And my name is Peter Sprague. Thank you for being with us. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to continue with some more music. We have a piece by Antonio Laro from Venezuela. This is a piece called El Marabino. It's a gorgeous little ditty.
That's how you do it in Venezuela, ladies and gents. Super cool, super cool, cool. All right, El Marabino is the name of that. Um, so Mark, uh, let, let me just tell a little bit about how I remember you. Mark Lessman, who's on sax, and he's, he, he's one of the primary members of the Jazz Martians of Del Mar. He grew up on Lunetta, Boule Lunetta Drive, right, Mark? That's right. And that's the same road as me, about mm, three, three or four or five, five blocks away. He right. grew up with lots of brothers and sisters. And I think you're about 10 years younger than me. I'm 64. How, how old are you, Mark? 63. What? Yeah. Did I, we go to high school together? Or God, we really didn't attend school that much. No, not we? that much. But <laughs> I think uh, uh, Trip and I are the same in the same grade. Okay. And then uh, you were a year older. And then mm -hmm. Rob Schneiderman was also the same age as us. And I think yeah. John Left, which was like a year older than you. That's right. He was the same as my brother Steve. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Mark uh, and Steve, uh, are you showing the picture of Mark when he was a little kid? He's a cutie. <laughs> So neat, and then and then we were into music, and you were into music, it, but it, it, it seems like you came to it, maybe, or maybe you, did you come to it at the same time that we did, or was it a little bit later? No, I, I actually moved down to Del Mar from Long Beach when I was, I think, uh, ninth grade, mm -hmm. and I immediately became friends with Tripp and Rob, okay. and then I started playing, and then after I was playing just a little bit, I remember... Um, you guys had already been playing, and, I, and I, you guys used to let me come and sit in with you. And, yeah. and we were riding a bus home one day, and I remember you said, Hey, get off here. We're going to come by my house. I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, really? Yeah, and you introduced me to 251 chords. I hope you know. I was nice about it. You were pretty nice. And then, you know, <laughs> and then, you know no, you were real nice. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't have to say that because yeah. we're doing this gig or anything, but, no, but that's I, nice. I mean, I'm glad. We're, I, best, but, yeah, we're best friends, man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was so neat, and Mark, um, th there was, and we're, we're, we'll talk about a band that we had together back then, but um, I'm so glad we got to do this and play together. Now, Mark and I don't get to play so much together, and it's only b because my brother Tripp, as you know, is a saxophonist, and, well, we're brothers, and we've done it forever, so he's, whenever I need sax, I usually call Tripp, but we thought for this one. Mark would be the perfect guy. All right. So hey, um, so I'm going to check in with my wife, Stephanie. She runs the chat. Um, Steph, anything important that I should know about? Just lots of hands clapping. Okay. okay. Lots of pictures of hands clapping. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, Steph had a kind of an interesting story. Um, she, when she grew up, she played flute, piccolo, saxophone, and was in a jazz band and in the marching band. And we have a really cool picture of her in the marching band with how much, Brian, weren't you saying something about how much, or someone was telling, the other day we were talking about how much those marching band costumes, oh, it was you, Brian. Those, those, those costumes are expensive. Yes, that's pretty much what I remember about being in band in high school, is that we were always trying to sell candy bars and other sort of items door to door so that we could afford these uniforms, which we wore possibly maybe four hours throughout the entire year. So it just didn't seem to add up. Yeah. That was my experience. With well, they sure look good in pictures, like you see the one with Steph. And then, Steph, um, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, well, my experience, we did fundraising too, but we wore a uniform like twice a week. We were at very it. busy at the Oceanside High School Band. It was a blast, a lot of work, but so rich in many ways. I absolutely loved it. My whole family was involved. Sisters played instruments. My mom was president of the Band Boosters. And I want to give a shout out to my mom. Happy birthday, Nana, as yeah. we all call her. Her, yeah. it's her birthday this week. Yeah, so when I told my parents about Peter, they asked, is he a drummer? <laughs> Because in our marching band, anyway, when there was drama, which were, there was a lot of, of course, or trouble, the drum section was always involved. Uh, Duncan, <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> of course. That's, that, was, that was our whole purpose in being there, was to cause trouble. I, uh, I believe it. Hey, Peter, do you remember in, in high school jazz band when the uh, band director yes. tried to get us? He said, well, if you guys want to be in jazz band, you have to do marching band. And we all, like five of us, you, me, Tripp, Rob, and John, Kelly, I guess maybe too. We all said, we're not doing that. I know. And they said, okay. 
I know. Yeah. yeah, we were rebels. We still are a little bit, but yeah. yeah. And so, Steph, what, what happened next? Oh, um, yeah, so... Well, you were telling me about your mom when we, yeah, first, so, when we first met. Yeah, when there was drama, the, uh, yeah, drum section. So, anyway, when they heard they, Peter was not a drummer, they, they had a sigh of relief. And <laughs> met him, of course, he was wonderful. So, you want to show that picture again, um, Steve? There we are on our wedding day. We're all happy getting, I'm getting ready for, for the big day. Um, yeah, so. Oh, good. Well, how about you other guys? Um, Duncan, when you were uh, being a musician, were your her parents happy about it? Probably, right, because your parents were musicians. Yeah, they were actually. I, I never got any grief from them at all about wanting to go into music. Um, my mother was a singer and had been kind of a professional singer. She went to Juilliard and sang Robert Shaw Chorale and did a lot of things. And so she had total love for music and she was actually thrilled that, uh, you know, that we, both my sister and I had, had pursued music. And, right. And, um, yeah, so th I never got so, any grief about it. I don't, I, you know, I kind of wish they had given me a harder time. I might, I might be a lawyer or something. You might be the president of the United States now. Oh, God. Because you know how it is. You can do anything you want in America. That's you right. You can be anything you want. <laughs> I love it. Hey, John Offercook, how about your folks? Yeah, I mean... It was kind of like I had this alien uh, gift, you know, and they, they, they were pretty supportive, you know, uh, uh, you know, but they didn't really know what to make of it, uh, I, have to say, I, I have to say. But, yeah. But they were, yeah, totally supportive. You know? Well, you know, because there's some parents that the last thing they want their kids to do, it's like jumping off a cliff, is to be a professional musician. Do it, of course, for fun, but are you going to make a living on it? Yeah. How about Mac? What's your story? Um, my parents pretty much had the same... I think reaction as as it sounds like John's did. They they were super into it and supportive, but I don't think they they ever really expected or guessed that their yeah. son would work out would turn out to be a musician. I actually remember though, I remember my mom telling me one time. I think she was joking that uh, if I ever got a job in a cubicle, she would disown me. So <laughs> so it worked out that hippie, I'm playing hippie, music. Hippie hippie <laughs> hippie angle. And Mark, your I never knew where your your mom of course now is super into your music, but. Were, were, as a kid, were, the, were you accepted that way? Yeah, they completely just let me go there. Anything but what I had been doing before would be great. <laughs> so, um, so were really, you living you know, hard or something? Yeah, I was living, you know, living, living dangerous. Yeah, um, good. But, but then when I discovered uh, music, it really calmed me down. So, nice. Yeah. Well, I wonder, they sh someone should do a study because it sounds like all of us, because my folks, of course, too, were very supportive of uh, me and my brother playing music. And maybe parents know really a lot. Maybe if they didn't see that we had sort of some natural talent and, and sort of desire to work on it, maybe they would have. Um, and also, what if we had been no talent or not enough talent, and they would have just maybe, I don't know. Let's give parents, we're, a lot of us are parents, so let's give, us, give credit to parents for looking after us. All right, let's move on. We're going to play. Steph, anything more from the chat or? Only the people seem to like the Martian theme. Good, let's yeah. bring it back. <laughs> it's really fun. What? Uh, speaking of which, keep it going, keep it going, you guys. Keep it, John, keep, keep that going for a second. And ladies and gentlemen, what happened on Highway 14? That's the name of this next song, Highway 14. We'll never know. <laughs> you got it, Doug.
Dakota. Beautiful. That's what happens on Highway 14. Peace, love, and happiness, man. None of this alien Martian activity. Well, thank you so much. That was called Highway 14. That was written by uh, Alan Pasquale, a, a great jazz pianist in Los Angeles. Um, all right, we're going to continue on, but let me do a couple of things. One thing, we, we have a tip jar. The way this works is we are all unemployed. Well, I wouldn't say all of us, because some of you guys have programming jobs, but most of us are unemployed and loving it, sort of loving it. Um, so we have a tip jar if you like the music and dig what we're doing. We love it except for the lack of money part. <laughs> yeah, we do. So well put. Gosh. So we have a virtual tip jar. There's many ways to pay, and know that this information uh, that you're looking at on the screen now will be at the end of the show. It'll be up for five minutes. So you can virtual tip, well tip, but virtually. Yes, that's it. So let's check in. My friend Brian, he, he is the map guy, and let's check in and see what he's got to say. Hey there, Peter. It's a nice night in Lucadia once again, but, but is there ever a bad night in Lucadia? I Never. <laughs> I didn't think it's so. It's a land of golden opportunity. <laughs> All right. Steve, could you go ahead and switch on to the, uh, okay, you're up there. All right, so yeah, last week, uh, the last show two weeks ago, we had a different map that was up here on the screen, and I decided to kind of take it to another level. Uh, so this week we have a, a globe of the actual world, and we can spin around and look at all the different people that are sitting there that have already signed in. We can go ahead, we can tap, and we can see who this person is up in Iceland. We have one Randy Chirazi in Iceland. Yeah. Oh, okay. he's a joker. That guy, I know him. He's, okay. he's super creative, dude. So we have uh, along the list on the side, we have the different people, and we can tap and see you know, where, where everybody is. And, uh, and we have nice representation here today, quite a few people. And, and, and from any exotic place, well, how many from Encinitas? We I definitely guess. have one from Hawaii. That, that is a Who is that? the most exotic. That one is, uh, is Daryl Aguino? Daryl Aguino. Aquino? Aquino. Yes, that sounds, that sounds legit. That's, that sounds Anybody familiar. know him? I know him. Oh, good. Okay. Daryl, the bass player? Yeah, yeah, yeah we know, we know Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Okay. Oh, good. Daryl. All uh, right. Excellent. Oh, I know. Yeah. Hey, Daryl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have people from all over. Carlsbad, Encinitas, yeah, Iceland, of course, El Cajon in Iowa, Portland. Who from Iowa? Uh, th that in Iowa. That's probably we have, Duncan's sister. Uh, indeed. Uh, De Deirdre? How do you pronounce Deirdre. it? Deirdre. Deirdre. Yes. Deirdre. 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 Okay. Deirdre. And Aww. from Vegas and so far. Yeah, well, thanks much. All right. I'll Good. let you get back to the show. Oh, thanks. So keep, keep, if you've been hesitant because you think we're going to steal your identity, and we aren't. And, and, and uh, we're good people that way. So if you want, if you were hesitant about doing it, do it again, and we'll check, him in, check in with Brian at the end. Onwards, Cutting Edge and Your Lady. We're going to pay a tribute to two, two saxophonists that were hugely influence, influential for me in my music. My brother Tripp is a saxophone player, so when we were young, he was always finding these Coltrane records, John Coltrane and Sonny Rollins records, and I would listen to them through the practice room. We, he practiced in the room right next to me, and I could hear his horn was loud, and I could hear what he was doing, and I thought, man, 
you know, I was looking at Charlie Christian, who is great, but I was thinking, what is Coltrane doing? So I, I've studied a lot of their music. And uh, Mark, big influence for you two, those two characters? The biggest, yeah. Oh, push yeah. your button. Yeah, yeah those, two, those two guys are both great uh, influences. I uh, listened to them endlessly late at night while eating ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a 1956 recording called Tenor Madness, and it's the only time that the two of them recorded, and apparently how it happened is they, of course, knew each other. They were sort of rising stars, but they were both recording at, in close proximity of time um, at Rudy Van Gelder's studio in New Jersey, each with different bands, and then they, then I guess it was more... Sonny Rollins' session, and he invited Coltrane to play this blues called Tenor Madness. It's like a long blues, both of them killing it on their own, and then at the end, they interact with each other, and it is musical to the nth degree. You know, some of those sessions are called cutting sessions, where you try to beat up the other person with how hip you are, and, and I'm not sure that they were doing that. They were just playing great music. So the piece we're going to play is by Sonny Rollins. It's called Cutting Edge, and it blends right into a song called Your Lady by John Coltrane. Yep, Dunk? Yeah. You got it.
Killing solo, John. Man, thank you. Cutting Edge, Your Lady, that's the name of those two songs. Hey, uh, let me tell you, Del Mar's population in 1970 was 4,000 people, and we were there. Weird that two decades worth of professional musicians emerged from that sleepy little Cali surf town. First the generation of uh, well, or first group of people were myself, Rob Schneiderman, my brother Tripp, Mark, of course, Kevin Latow, Kelly Jacoy, Mark Dresser, and John Leftwich. All these guys lived in Del Mar. The, not all of them grew up in Del Mar, but they were the, in Del Mar. Then 10 years later, there was another group of people, Steve Feyrobin, Bim Strasberg, and Brian Allard. And, and, and then we have to give an honorable mention to Johnny Harp Mention. You guys always hear me play with this harpist that comes and sits in, that's Johnny Minchin. And he grew up in the next block, and even though he isn't a full-time musician, he's got enough spirit when he plays his harmonica to fill the city limits to the brim. So that's the, the crew, that's the Del Martians of the Martians of Del Mar. That's a hard phrase to get. Uh, one of the early bands we had was called Dance of the Universe, and that was with Cal a bunch of these characters. And what we do, um, some, a lot of our shows, is we get a guest from some faraway place to join us. So tonight, we're ex super excited to have Rob Schneiderman, the pianist that we had a band back in the day. Uh, he grew up in Del Mar, but we had a band. He lives now in New York City. But back in the day, we had a band called Manzanita. And it was Mark and the whole gang. And I think there's some pictures being shown now of the band in its early infant stage, and then years later, we got, had kind of a reunion. That's a cool picture, by the way, Mark, <laughs> of, of, that, of that reunion. Uh, Rob, when he lived in, he grew up in Del Mar, moved to New York City, played with Eddie Harris, made a bunch of his own trio records. Um, then he got into math, and now he's really into math. And math being he got a, P did he get a PhD? I think he got a PhD in math and now teaches at a college. Uh, and also does research, math research, heavy fourth dimensional topology, and he goes to Europe and does that. So he's an incredible guy, and he is going to fly in a solo from New York City with us now. We're going to play a song that um, is called Bumblebee, and I had a chance to talk to Rob, so you're going to hear now um, a little interview that him and I played. Are you guys all dialed up for that? And I had a chance to talk to Rob, so yes. you're going to hear now yep. uh, Let it roll. a little interview that him and I So, have. ladies and gentlemen, first uh, first up, we have Rob Schneiderman in the house. He's yes. going to do a virtual performance for us. Rob, thanks so, for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, first, my uh, first up, Happy we have Rob Schneiderman you. in the house. I love it. Hey, well, I had just a couple questions before we get into the song. Rob, so, uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, first we are calling first up, we have Light of Music, the jazz marshes. Hey, well, I had just a couple questions before we get into the song. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are calling for this night of music. It would be neat to get the rest of the whole game. Now, this is a couple of questions. We are cal
the you had all the jazz stations around. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, we need to use about or ideas about what was jazz stations around. Yeah, I mean, like you say, it was a very special time. Uh, I remember us like going surfing in the morning and then this yeah. yeah. Okay, folks, we're on. I hope that all worked. We couldn't tell from here, but it looked like it worked. That's Rob and me talking, and we're now we're going to play the piece called Bumblebee from the album called Manzanita. Let me just check to make sure. Two things. Yep. Band ready? Yes. All right, let's do this thing. We got some little intro readiness. Here it comes. Two, three, four. Wait, wait, sorry. <laughs> I need to get Rob's screen up. So, folks, so what, you know, what you're looking at here, well, it's going to be black, but you, Rob's going to appear here when it's his turn. He's going to take the solo on it. All right, everyone. Two, three, four.
I'm going to have to say that we had some technical difficulties and the interview did not work. It didn't? No. It didn't go Unfortunately, through? Unfortunately, no. Hmm. We saw and heard a solo, though, so that was great. You heard the solo? Yeah. That's cool. I wonder what happened, but we'll figure that out. It seemed like it was looking bright on the screen. What did, what did they say? It was just dark for five minutes? No. We could... Yeah. We could see it, but we heard another audio track on top of it. So the two audio tracks, same volume, going at the same time. Very confusing. Yeah. We think the Martians were involved. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is a great, 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 great. Well, okay. Well, so I want to add one more thing sure. that there are over 150 people tuning in. Beautiful. And it's just wonderful. Beautiful. And a lot of people had some questions about the time signature on the cutting edge piece. Nice. Okay, so the time signature, the, the, uh, the piece, the cutting edge, that. That's in 4 4. And then those are the quarter notes, I guess. And then, 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 the next tune is in three four, so it goes, bong gong 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 gong. So, quarter note stays the same, but instead of four beats per measure, and the four beats per measure are felt in half of that. So, that felt like this. 
but in actual they're written like this and those become three and that becomes the Coltrane song so and yes we kind of did a tricky thing there didn't we we just <laughs> Actually, well, I think we better just admit the fact that Mac bailed us out there in that one spot. He did. We rely on each other. We're, we, we rehearse it, and then we crash and burn a little bit. Thanks, but, Duncan. But, <laughs> but certain people pull us through. Yes, so really nice. Um, Stephanie, anything more from the chat? We're good? Yeah, all's good. Okay. Well, I guess since you asked me, I just want to... Um, give a shout out to the musicians that are listening. It's Peter yeah. Rahill, Kelly Jacoy. Kelly Jacoy! Yeah! Aww. Lori Bell, Brian Allard, up oh, Pacific fantastic. Northwest. And it's of course, Brian's birthday, by the way. Brian's birthday. Brian's birthday. Happy birthday, Brian. <laughs> and then the, our big, nice, uh, big fan, Robert Bush. From Robert the Reader. Bush. Yeah. Thanks so much. Great to have you all with us. We're really enjoying it. We have a couple more. This next one is incredible. Um, this next one is by Billy Strayhorn. Billy Strayhorn was a composer um, and I guess a piano player too. He wrote a song when he was 15 years old called Lush Life and it's an incredible composition from just the music and the melody but the lyrics too are just incredible and I just wanted to read you a few things, a few of the lyrics and, and at 15 were you doing this? Were you writing lyrics like this? You know, we were writing, little baby, I love you. Listen to this. So the, the song Lush Life describes the author's weariness of the nightlife after a failed romance, wasting time with jazz and cocktails at come what may places in the company of girls with sad and sullen gay faces with disting... John, do you know what that word is? Dis Distingue traces? Uh, distingue. Uh, my French is so bad now. It's uh, probably just distinguished. Distinguished, yeah. Exactly. But in French, is that what it is? Distingue, yeah. Okay. I think like, so. They used to be distinguished. Yes. Anyway, that's the flavor of this. This is called Lush Life.
lush life. Very nice. Very nice, you guys. All right, let's check in with our man with the map. Is there anything else that needs to be reported out there in Never Never Land? Peter, the music was fantastic this evening. Thanks to all the musicians. It was just stupendous. Gosh, man, it was just just great. Now, we're not over yet, though. Okay, just well, so you know. well yeah. I just want to let you know. It's been sounding good over here, and I uh, just wanted to make everybody aware. Okay, as far as it's a good evening for technology, because some of my pins dropped off the map, but that's okay. We got a few more. <laughs> we have some new pins that arrived, and it looks like there are two members of uh, Mr. Lesman's family. But as well, we have a rogue visitor from Mars that's up in the right-hand side near New York. <laughs> Randy Chirazi, he seems to make the rounds here. Oh, good on so, him, man. Yeah, so, so I need to do a little bit of QA for the next show, but I think we're on the right track. Good. Uh, take it back there, Steph. Love having you. And Steph, anything, anything else you want to? Well, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. It's really great. We couldn't do this without you, so we appreciate you music lovers out there and uh, the musicians love looking at the and um, show later and hearing your chats and they get a lot out of that so thank you for participating indeed okay folks we have one more smoker for you this is a, a piece of mine called El Boomerang the boomerang and it's uh, nine pages long and it's it's intense and and meet you at the end we're gonna smoke this one El Boomerang. Roland. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, thank you so much. How about that drum solo, man? Those are the best sounding toms north of the Mississippi. Incredible. That's that uh, drum solo from the captain of the Enterprise. <laughs> Yeah, folks. Okay, well, let me tell you who's in the band. That was Duncan Moore on the drums, everyone. Duncan Moore. Mark Lessman on the saxophone and flute. Mark Lessman. John Offercook playing the piano. Beautiful. Right upstairs is Mac Layton. Mac Layton on the bass. We have Steve. Steve uh, Grant. He's working the switcher, and I think... My beautiful wife, Stephanie, working the chat. Yeah. Brian Baltazar, working the tech map yeah. thing. <laughs> yes, and my name is Peter Sprague. Thanks so much. We uh, uh, are going to do a show coming up probably two weeks away. I'll let you know. There's a little bit of unsureness of when the next one is going to be, but they're going to keep coming because this is the most fun thing to do. So please leave a tip if you feel inspired. The tip jar will be, the information will be up at the end of the, the uh, will, will be done, but it'll stay up for another five minutes or so, so you can write down that information. Super fun to be with you. Remember, when things get sketchy, look up the Jazz Martians of Del Mar. Asta.